uh, founding member of the international uh, internal advisory board of uh, Sirius. Um, I'm professor of linguistics um, uh, here. Uh, and uh, uh, right now, I uh, am very worried about what you will see, because uh, uh, if I cannot show you things, you won't believe a thing I'm going to say. Is anybody more familiar than I am with this uh, setup? That's what Steve was supposed um, uh, to do. I just did it at the University of Maryland on an identical setup, but uh, there were like seven people pushing buttons there. <laughs> PC? I'm probably, I'm probably PC. Are we seeing anything? And, and to do what? Hmm? That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I made quite a reputation for myself uh, here in the 80s fixing people uh, computers. They were usually not plugged in, so I would uh, duck under the deck, breathe heavily, say, well, I don't know, that seems to be pretty complex, and then I would plug it in and everything would work. Uh, so I go on, right? Well, I have on and off here, and nothing's happening, right? Nobody can see anything? Nobody can see my desktop? Nope. Oh, well, it's, it's projecting something. Yeah. That's what I've been doing, warming up. Uh, le let, let me talk um, uh, a little bit. Uh, and uh, Steve, I started uh, talking uninterrupted. Are you familiar with this thing? No, I'm not. Not with this one here. Mm. <laughs> it will be a very short talk if I if I if, <laughs> if I don't if I don't get it going. No, we're going to be familiar with it quickly. Then. Yeah. This th this thing is is on now. I think. Hit a button over here. Uh, PC. Yeah, let's try that. Uh, internal, external must be external. There we go. Ooh, Ooh, there RGB too. No, we just got Here we go. One, one two. Um, any more um, uh, time? Uh, I looked um, at the uh, 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 speakers that you have had this uh, semester. I attended some um, uh, last semester. Uh, much of what you are getting comes to you right from the center of uh, information security uh, um, uh, field, which is uh, a center represented here by people interested in information security, probably uh, in the departments of computer science and uh, electrical en en engineering. Uh, one of the strengths of Sirius uh, and one of the uh, uh, advantages and the wisdom of uh, its founders, or let's uh, be blunt, its founder, um, uh, is uh, uh, to make it um, uh, uh, multidisciplinary. And uh, we are getting uh, very good exposure, very good publicity because of that, because we are the only uh, ones who can address the problem in all of its uh, dimensions, from the highly technical ones, which I'm sure most of the talent here um, uh, uh, represents, uh, to the uh, soft issues of uh, philosophy and uh, ethics and uh, stuff. Wh where I come from is probably the most technical of those other um, uh, disciplines. My field is linguistics, but what I'm going to talk about it is a computational linguistic approach uh, to natural uh, to uh, um, information security. Uh, the talk is uh, NLP for IIS, the IIS as in Sirius, NLP is natural language processing, which is the same as computational um, uh, uh, linguistics. If you've never heard of uh, those beasts, think for a while about machine translation. Think whatever bad thoughts you may be having about machine translation, it, it will help uh, for, uh, uh, for a while. Uh, 
uh, let me talk about natural language a little bit. I can do some of it without uh, the um, uh, slides. Uh, you probably all heard uh, uh, from uh, um, uh, the history of World War II, that episode that uh, people in uh, um, encryption and decryption will always tell you about. It, it is partly apocryphal, that is, uh, um, nobody really knows whether it happened or how it happened, though uh, um, until a short time ago I thought that I um, uh, did. Uh, the, uh, both the Allies and the Axis powers uh, uh, were enormously successful in breaking each other's um, uh, codes. Now that um, more and more papers are uh, declassified about it, we find out uh, all kinds of difficult situations the leaders found themselves in, like for instance Winston Churchill uh, uh, had received a decoded signal about the bombardment of Coventry and did nothing to made the decision uh, to do nothing to save the population because that would have indicated to the uh, um, Germans that their code uh, was uh, broken. There were many episodes like that on both um, uh, sides. And then um, uh, in 1944, to celebrate the year in which I was born, um, uh, uh, two Navajo speakers were put in the headquarters of uh, um, uh, ours, that is I uh, Ike's, uh, Eisenhower's uh, headquarters and uh, uh, Marshal Montgomery's uh, uh, British uh, headquarters who communicated with each other in open um, uh, Navajo. And uh, the Germans couldn't uh, uh, decode it. Uh, the, uh, I know that uh, um, it was uh, actually initiated by a linguist uh, teaching at the University of uh, Michigan at, the time, at, this, at, at that time, Edward Sapir. And um, I don't know whether it actually happened. And from another source, I heard that it happened on the Pacific Theater, but I think it was in uh, Europe. Think what happened. Uh, the Germans started treating that text as regular code, using all kinds of the usual pre-computerized combinatorial uh, methods, going ra raising the degree of mathematical complexity, trying this and that, and there was none of that there, because it was natural language that was used to encode meaning. That's what natural languages are. The way they encode meaning is outright idiotic. That's why it's impossible to decode, because there is no rhyme or reason um, uh, uh, to it. Uh, so much so, so badly so, that uh, linguistics, one of the most uh, distinguished uh, disciplines with a long formal um, uh, tradition ahead of all humanities and social uh, sciences, very theoretically enhanced, very um, uh, um, computational, etc., still cannot figure out all the rules of any uh, language. We have rough approximations. Uh, linguistics is, of course, uh, the best chance we have at this uh, uh, moment of penetrating the, the workings of the um, uh, mind. But that is uh, all um, uh, fine. What does it have to do with um, uh, security? How does meaning, uh, um, uh, how, how is meaning encoded uh, in language? What we know is hundreds of rules, intersecting rules, that is rules which overgeneralize and then um, uh, specify a little more, rules which work on rules, and lists of exceptions. Still nothing? It doesn't detect that there's another monitor available. Pardon me? It doesn't detect that there's another monitor available. Uh, excuse me. Where do we want it to uh, detect? Try the adapter. Just the adapter on the back. No, the, the, the adapter. Shall we try that? No, that the, the, the adapter is for this. It, it, it fits. Uh, 
There is a bad tradition uh, involving linguistic talks. We had a visitor last year, and then we got it going at the last moment of his uh, uh, talk. I hate it to happen uh, again. I was assured that uh, this has been done any number of times. Uh, shall I disconnect? Or, uh, it seems connected correctly. It seems connected correctly. I didn't disconnect. I mean, the plug would just wouldn't fit if. Uh, no, no. Uh, <coughs> I was going to try restarting again. Why? What did it change? Um, the reason um, uh, uh, a foreign language, a language that uh, you don't know, uh, confuses um, uh, uh, the um, uh, non-speakers of it the way it did in that Navajo um, anecdote is that with all its uh, uh, illogical, uh, idiotic uh, um, uh, nature. The code uh, that is used in your native uh, language or a language that you are familiar with is transparent um, uh, uh, to you. The uh, other language uses a code which is not transparent and uh, it is not compatible uh, at all. There are examples uh, of that kind. Every language sort of dissects reality different, like for instance, look at the words for siblings that we have in English, uh, brother and um, uh, uh, sister. Uh, that's a very common case, but not uh, in all the languages, where we see two different uh, possibilities. In English, the Hungarian language sees four. There are four separate words for older brother and younger brother and older uh, sister and younger sister, and no word for uh, older, for just brother, that is uh, sibling, ma ma male sibling of any uh, age. In Malayan there is just one word which uh, says sibling and there is no um, uh, distinction. Surely in any language you can add uh, words and explain what uh, um, uh, happens. But nevertheless, uh, meanings are encoded um, uh, uh, differently. Uh, Look at the rules that I um, uh, talked about. Uh, simple rule, not even a semantic, not a meaning-related uh, rule. How do we form plurals in um, uh, English? There is one seemingly very general uh, rule. That is, take uh, the noun, add uh, the uh, ending s uh, um, uh, to it. Uh, covers a lot of cases. Won't help you with uh, every case. A, it is. It, it looks better than it sounds because in the spelling it's S, but in the pronunciation it's either, either Z, like in dogs, or S, like in cats, or even is, as in churches. And then there are wonderful words that we are quickly forgetting, but they are still um, uh, uh, with us, like syllabus, syllabi and formula, formulae, of course everybody says and writes formulas now, but also old uh, uh, English words like man, men, uh, and uh, uh, fish, fish, doesn't change, one fish, um, uh, two fish, everybody says fishes these days, but uh, um, uh, nevertheless. That is a very typical uh, situation of a simple rule. How do you compu uh, uh, compute such a rule? That is, imagine a very simple morphological uh, generator which uh, takes as input a word in the singular and noun in the singular and the output is in the um, uh, plural. Uh, the best way to do it is first publish the list of exceptions. There are about 200 of them. That's one mystical thing uh, in all languages. The list of all exceptions never goes over 200. So apparently that we are hardwired for dealing with 200 uh, exceptions, but not um, uh, uh, more. Uh, tell me when you give up, because then I will simply start looking uh, at the slides for my own education. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I can wing it for a while, but uh, uh, then uh, uh, 
So uh, the computational rule would say check first whether your word appears on the list of exceptions. And if it does, there is the plural there. So form the plural um, uh, that way. Check next whether the noun ends in a sibilant, that is a sound, a sound, not a letter. S, Z, Sh, Z, Ch, and J. And if it does, then add is as the plural. Sibilants apart, exceptions um, apart, now check whether the uh, noun adds in a voiceless consonant, and there is a list of it, or a voiced consonant or a vowel. Voiceless, add S. The other case, add Z. This is not the, the worst rule there is. That is, we have to deal with rules which are much more complicated. Who are we and what do we do? Natural language um, uh, uh, processing is a set, a growing set of problems, all based on the same um, uh, uh, principle. You input text into the computer. It doesn't really matter whether you use voice recognition uh, block, they're getting much better now, uh, or just type it in or uh, scan it um, uh, in. The important thing is for the computer to analyze the text, to understand what the text is about, to decode it to get from the surface form of the language to its meaning, and then manipulate the meaning. How? Uh, express it in another language. That's your machine uh, translation, uh, translation. Condense it. That's your um, uh, uh, summarization. Look for certain things in intelligent searches. This is your data mining or uh, information um, uh, retrieval. Use it. Uh, combination of all of those for a question answering session uh, with um, uh, a human. And the list is uh, growing. The important thing is the decoding, that is understanding the text. That's the uh, bottleneck. The uh, uh, other part that is getting from the meaning into um, a text in the same language or another language called generation, the first uh, one is called natural language analysis, the second is natural language generation, is surprisingly easier because you have the meaning already. And there are many different ways of expressing that meaning in the language. And if you don't get them all, you will get one of them. So that is an easier um, uh, problem. Now, what, how does it all relate to um, uh, uh, security? It doesn't unless, bye-bye, um, uh, unless, um, uh, um, uh, it, it doesn't unless uh, security involves uh, texts. And it involves texts. My first slide, which I will be showing you uh, now, let me show it to myself. Uh, where am I here? It's a beautiful slide. <laughs> Turn it around. <laughs> and blow it up. Uh, to make up for it, uh, uh, please feel free to uh, visit the URL um, uh, uh, site where a version of this paper uh, is. You can access it uh, from uh, the Sirius site. Seminar, look, uh, look me up at the speaker and then there is uh, uh, a, a link to uh, this thing. It also will tell you that uh, it is the result of joint work that we have conducted here with Craig McDonough here and professors uh, um, uh, Mike Atala from CS and Sergey Nirenburg from uh, New Mexico State University. Uh, there are four items on our plate. One of them is memorizing randomly generated passwords with the help of automatically generated funny jingles. Has um, uh, any of you uh, um, uh, known, did anybody know Pascal Meunier here? Are you Pascal? Yes. You are Pascal? Yes. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now you talk. Yeah. Uh, Pascal did some uh, revolutionary work with uh, uh, Mike Atala on uh, mixing lyrics with uh, um, uh, music. 
We took it from the actually a very small part of what he did. He went much further and focused on something he didn't focus so much uh, on, unless I'm mistaken, and that is actually generating jingles from a password. So I'll uh, come to that uh, um, uh, in a second. The second item on the menu is natural language watermarking. That is, can we have a message in natural um, uh, language, a novel that I uh, write? And it uh, has a hidden message uh, there, which I can produce in court if somebody else tries uh, to steal it. And it says, this novel was written by Victor Raskin uh, at one of his less lucid uh, moments. And uh, uh, date and uh, uh, stuff um, uh, like that. Watermarking, um, have you had any exposure to watermarking here? So you know what it is uh, as far as non-natural language uh, text is concerned. We are trying to, to extend uh, mm, uh, that into natural language uh, text. The third item on the agenda that we were much more hopeful about uh, than we are now because we have discovered the fourth item, um, and that is how about throwing machine translation? How about trying to recreate the Navajo um, uh, uh, trick? Obviously, we cannot uh, do it the same way. That is, the moment people see something they cannot decode, they will think of Navajo. Now, that by itself is not so bad because it won't be Navajo. And there are 5,600 languages. We have uh, uh, resources for machine translation um, uh, for about 40 um, of them. And we have a system for rapid deployment of uh, a machine translation system for language X in, which is semi-automatic in less than six months. So we can change those languages all the time. Still, um, uh, it's all done you know, from websites and stuff, and how long will it take for the enemy uh, to discover uh, that? How long will it take for one of us to sell it to the enemy? Um, uh, so um, uh, nevertheless, this is one of the um, uh, um, uh, possibilities. If you hear of any sellers, uh, my um, uh, uh, addresses uh, on the site. Um, the fourth one is the one that we discovered in the process of working on the uh, first three, and th this is a biggie. And this is the one which I will probably come and talk to you again at uh, uh, Spafford's uh, uh, request in March. He uh, was not aware of the fact, and we'll never tell him that we couldn't get the projector um, uh, going, but he thought that I had enough uh, for um, uh, sharing with you uh, this time and stopping short of that fourth one, and then you will have a colleague from um, um, uh, Alamo, uh, who will be here, Judy Hochberg, who will be here on the 25th, and she's a, um, we, we, we're considering joint research uh, about it. She may, she doesn't do uh, that fourth thing, downgrading is, is, is the term, but she uh, will give you some preliminaries which will help. And then I will come back with another set of mysterious secret classified slides that I cannot show you uh, uh, and, talk, and talk about downgrading. This is the biggie. This is the biggie. Uh, to celebrate my um, uh, uh, 50, uh, f f first birthday, on the 17th of April, 1995, President Clinton uh, issued uh, an executive order, one of his smartest. I mean, all of them are sort of comparable, but uh, this one is the smartest. That is, it obligates every um, uh, branch of the government, every department, to declassify documents which can be declassified. When I become president, I cannot be president. I was not born in this country. When my daughter becomes president, I'll, um, uh, uh, I hope to create an automatic module for generating executive orders of um, uh, that kind. That, I think, will, will, be, will, will be very easy. Now, I don't know whether you uh, guys have an appreciation of what it is. Uh, the very rough estimate is about 80 billion pages of stuff that need to be looked at. Most of it can be declassified, some uh, cannot. Department of Energy came under fire first because of the, all the nuclear uh, s stuff. Now, incidentally, everything is on hold because of the problems at uh, Los Alamos. Uh, now, but uh, 
they created a book of uh, human uh, instructions, that is human to human instructions. This is how you declassify. This is what we can say, this is what we can't say. And it's based on any number of instructions, directives, they change all the time. That's about 700 pages of um, instructions. Uh, it uh, takes on the average a human declassifier, a pretty highly um, uh, paid uh, specialist uh, at uh, DOE, uh, two weeks to declassify uh, the document by just sort of blacking out, blanching out the stuff that uh, can be blanched out, or by saying too much of it, the whole document uh, should uh, stay uh, classified. Then it takes about uh, two months for the document to go places and for final approval and, and stuff. This cannot be done. You cannot hire enough people. It's too um, uh, expensive. What do we need? automatic declassification. That is a system which uh, reads and understands those instructions and then implements them uh, automatically. Now that decree, will uh, the, 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 the executive order uh, gave 10 years uh, to the agencies. So um, uh, the deadline is my 61st birthday um, uh, on the 17th of April of year 2005. And I guarantee to you that I will not get a birthday present uh, that day. That is, uh, uh, the um, uh, executive order will not be implemented. But something else, and, 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 and we tried to um, uh, make some inroads in that, talking to DOE about it, and uh, they're simply not willing to commit any funds to that. But there is something else, which is basically the same problem, and uh, this is what uh, one of the speakers last fall was talking about. Have, have you heard Carl, did you hear Carl Landwer? Uh, from uh, uh, MitreTech, used to be with the uh, what Naval Research um, uh, uh, Laboratory. Downgrading. Here is the deal. You have two uh, networks, high network and low network. That the high network is for people with security clearance. The low network is for everybody else. Uh, files, information, should be allowed to flow from low to high, but never from high um, uh, uh, to low. Typical situation, uh, this is what Carl uh, used, uh, coalition agreement with our NATO partners. We uh, um, are supposed to share intelligence information and uh, other stuff. Do we share it? Of course. We share what we choose to share, and we don't share what we don't choose to share. Again, there are instructions, there are directions. Some of them probably even uh, unwritten. That is, there is some person responsible for that, and he or she decides this, will, this is going and this is not uh, going. The uh, uh, problem is very much like declassification. Again, you must be able to detect classified sensitive, uh, sensitive material and then do something about it. But it's more complex because you also have to cover it up. That is, you cannot send to our allies a document which uh, uh, is 80 pages long and contains three sentences which are not blanched out. Right? What you need to send them is uh, a text which contains only those three uh, sentences, as if there is nothing else. That is, we are concealing not only the information, but also the fact that we are concealing some information. We have to uh, create a seamless do uh, open document which uh, has no trace of any uh, concealment. That is an interesting um, uh, problem, but also it is a problem that unlike declassification, which will never be uh, implemented automatically and manually, has to be implemented. Because it's happening right now. That is uh, what Carl uh, and his associates uh, um, are dealing with, is the technical problems. Like, for instance, you cannot disallow entirely the flow of information from uh, uh, low up because you need to have the buffers talking to each other. That is, the buffer up there should tell you that it is full or something. There should be some signal. You cannot just prescribe 
any um, uh, downflow of information, there should be some technical information going down, and people have already figured out how to leak uh, uh, sensitive information that way. Uh, so um, even that is uh, a difficult um, uh, 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 problem. But also we need to propagate those documents down seamlessly while uh, removing all those uh, things which uh, shouldn't be seen by anybody by, but um, uh, us. I must tell you uh, also that we have been doing that kind of um, uh, uh, research. Uh, uh, most of our funding here and in, in the allied uh, computing research uh, laboratory at New Mexico State University, represented by Sergei Nirenburg, who is a uh, close associate, a former PhD um, student um, uh, of mine, a much larger lab than uh, we have um, here. We've been um, uh, funded and funded very generously by the Department of Defense and National Security Agency, and all our projects are unclassified. That's the beauty of it. We can handle downgrading and declassification by developing techniques without seeing actual texts, because it's very easy to extrapolate from one kind of uh, text to uh, the other. This is something that I will be talking about uh, uh, next time, hopefully, hopefully with better luck with uh, projections, or I will come prepared with printed uh, transparencies or you know, uh, prompt cards, cue cards, or whatever. Uh, let me focus now uh, for next few minutes on the um, simplest of the items on the uh, menu, something which should be close to Pascal's uh, um, heart, and uh, uh, something that we uh, have implemented uh, uh, more than um, uh, others. What we have so far is this. Uh, let's assume that you um, have been issued a uh, random generated um, uh, uh, password, um, uh, and uh, uh, that that uh, password uh, consists of uh, eight letters only. That is what we have implemented uh, so far. Uh, it doesn't include uh, uh, numbers or any um, other um, ASCII um, uh, symbols except uh, alphabetical uh, ones and uh, no caps, that is, it's not uh, case uh, sensitive. Uh, if, if you are from here, then uh, you are um, uh, pretty much, uh, I mean from Purdue, you are pretty much sympathetic to the idea that random generated passwords are a good thing. Um, uh, talking to people outside of Purdue, uh, submitting papers to uh, conferences and stuff, we get a lot of uh, um, uh, pretty arrogant attitudes. Like, who cares? I mean, I mean that is such a feeble defense. Why even uh, do it? Uh, well, we think it's, 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 it's something uh, that is definitely uh, uh, worth uh, doing. After all, our 35,000 students here uh, walk around with their accounts protected only by their uh, passwords, so why not make them more uh, immune to uh, um, uh, hacking than uh, um, uh, the obvious ones? Uh, so, uh, I'm getting uh, uh, there. This is what we do. We uh, take uh, this um, uh, uh, combination uh, of uh, uh, letters and create, generate automatically an eight word jingle. Out of all the uh, richness that Pascal has uh, created, we take one primitive uh, tune. I'm not sure that you even have it. Maybe somebody, I didn't grow up in this uh, country, so uh, I have strange gaps in my uh, uh, culture. What is the tune? Where does the tune? Ta 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 ta. That's all we have. That is, that's the one that we have uh, implemented uh, so far. Eight words. Uh, four words per line, per line. The first three words of each line are uh, bisyllabic. That is uh, the ta-ta, 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 ta. -ta, ta, -ta.
cha. The last word is the um, monosyllabic uh, word. Thank God English has tons of them. Um, and um, uh, the second line mirrors the first line in, in, uh, entirely. The second line rhymes the last uh, words, the monosyllabic uh, words uh, um, uh, rhyme. Uh, we uh, defined a very simple grammar for um, uh, uh, this thing. Bear with me, I lost the slide. You see, it doesn't matter that we don't have projection. I lost the slide anyway. Now here it is. Yeah. Uh, the grammar is very um, uh, uh, simple. It's uh, something like, uh, mm, uh, let, let me give you an example. Uh, the first one is a noun, two, two, two syllables. The second one is a verb, the second word. The third uh, word is a noun in the possessive um, uh, uh, case. And the last one is a monosyllabic uh, noun. So a typical example, actually a generated uh, example, uh, is, what was it, Craig? What, what example did I use here? Why, why is it? Oh, there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is a typical uh, example. Uh, Sandra handled Byron's vault, William wasted Lana's ore. It's not the best jingle in the, in the world. Uh, is it uh, easily mnemonic? I don't know. I forgot it already. Um, uh, but, uh, but you uh, get the idea. The, the password is, of course, S-H-B-V-W-W-L-O. Uh, means absolutely nothing. It's uh, random um, uh, generated. Now, uh, the uh, implementation is based on lists. That is, we have uh, candidates for the first uh, and uh, 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 third uh, word of each line are names. So we have a list of names, a sampling of names for each of the letters of the um, um, alphabet. Uh, we have a list of um, uh, verbs, and we have lists of the non-name uh, nouns. What we are also trying to do, and I will not get into that because it's a totally different um, uh, uh, issue is we are trying to make it funny. In that, we, are, uh, we base ourselves on work, my own and uh, um, Salvatore Atardo's, uh, also a Purdue graduate, a former PhD student of mine, on computing jokes. That is, we have software which computes uh, 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 jokes. Uh, you realize I wouldn't be standing here if we could generate uh, good jokes. Uh, uh, <laughs> There's no market for the jokes that we uh, generate. But we, are, we, but we unleashed uh, uh, a floodgate. Just about everybody who's heard of that is creating um, uh, uh, systems, or simple, simple systems based on the same templates, stupid templates that uh, we have done, generating cross jokes, generating punning riddles, generating stuff like that. One colleague um, uh, who did uh, her PhD dissertation on that at the University of Edinburgh uh, actually uh, came up with a very witty, I think that's the funniest part of it, defense of uh, that kind of uh, uh, systems. That is, she said uh, her system, JAPE, uh, it is called generated 50 cross jokes. What do you get if you um, cross X with Y? And uh, then she took uh, uh, 50 jokes uh, from some uh, list of jokes and mix them together and human subjects couldn't tell the ones generated by J from the ones gener generated by people because they were all awful. <laughs> that's an interesting, that's an interesting defense, defense. Look, my stuff is awful but it's no more awful than your stuff. Therefore, it's good. <laughs> Therefore, my stuff is good. Yours is still not good. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, anyway, uh, what we are uh, doing, and Craig uh, is um, uh, here to answer any 
uh, questions, share the software uh, with you. I think it's the second uh, beta release um, uh, now. Uh, which, uh, what, what, uh, what we are trying to do is to make it more memorable by making them funny. Where we are right now and, uh, is that we are trying to make uh, the verbs in the two lines somehow opposite to each other. Like, for instance, uh, the first, in the first line, it's like a good verb. And in the second one, it's a bad verb. That is, uh, in the first line, we'll say somebody did something good for somebody. And the second line would uh, say, and somebody else did something bad to uh, somebody. The reason for that is that uh, uh, there is a uh, formal theory of humor. Mine, very good, uh, 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 which, which says that much of humor is based on that T type of oppositions, and we are trying to uh, get into that. Uh, it's much easier to generate jokes uh, which are short text but still longer than this very highly uh, um, uh, uh, constrained uh, text. Our possibilities here are uh, limited. So what we are going to do, what we are doing right now, is trying to make it funnier. There is a cheap way of doing that. Uh, uh, the cheapest humor uh, in the world is the one based on obscenities, uh, sort of sexual jokes. So what if we make one verb sort of neutral and the other um, overtly uh, sexual or whatever? That will make it memorable. I think we'll probably make it into the journal in Korea, and, this, and the state legislature will become interested on what the tax, taxpayers' money um, is um, uh, spent. Uh, our next idea about that is how about doing it the other way around. That is, rather than uh, issuing a random uh, generated password and then for the system to generate a jingle. Uh, you, you get the idea. I think that was Pascal's idea. Um, uh, that is, uh, I, I think the responsibi responsibility is his for the initiative uh, to turn us into uh, a nation of uh, jingle uh, humming idiots. That is, everybody <laughs> just walks around, hums the jingle, which is his or her uh, password. That was the idea, Pascal, right? Um, uh, uh, but uh, uh, w one uh, possibility is how about starting with a jingle? That is, creating a jingle you like and then taking the first words as a password. That would be randomly enough uh, generated. Maybe not. Maybe people will not come up with a lot of words beginning with an X um, or uh, a Y. But this is something which may help us uh, to make it uh, funnier or more uh, memorable. At this point, we have no idea how to put in numbers there, because we cannot afford to put the word for the number there, both for security reasons and because it takes um, uh, uh, space. We have no idea how to uh, do uh, the caps because you see uh, it would be uh, an interesting idea to use names for caps in the jingle, but of if, uh, what if three uppercase uh, letters in the um, uh, password come together? Uh, how will we do um, uh, uh, that? It is an interesting uh, problem uh, which combines natural language generation, uh, that is uh, I encoding meaning in natural language, which as I tried to explain um, earlier, is easier than um, analysis. It is also the idea of uh, computing humor, that is making it um, uh, um, uh, funnier. If you are interested in that, I'll be happy to give you references uh, to uh, that kind of um, uh, work. Um, and uh, mm, uh, there are all kinds of technical um, uh, problems here um, uh, as well. It would be nice to match what Pascal has done, that is to be able to select your own tune. You have a, quite a variety of tunes in your software, right? Uh, that Not in theory many, but in practice just a couple. Well, it's, a couple is better than <laughs> one. I, 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 remember, I remember an old uh, movie where Cary Grant, very uh, uh, drunk already, asked uh, his friend, the bartender, for a couple of uh, uh, drinks, and the bartender brings three, and Cary Grant says, a couple means four. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, anyway. Uh, 
let me uh, take another uh, f five minutes and I'll uh, finish at uh, my, my part at uh, 530 uh, to talk very briefly about watermarking. Here we are trying to adapt to natural language the methods uh, developed by Mike Atala and Sam uh, Wagstaff uh, um, in the um, uh, computer department uh, based on quadratic um, uh, residues. That is, you start out with, you hate them, right? Sh shall I not continue? Uh, you, you start with your key is a large uh, prime number, a very large prime number. And then there is a simple formula which uh, calculates the quadratic residue for any number uh, which um, related to this one. And it uh, gives you either plus or minus um, uh, one. You can treat plus one as one. Uh, minus one as uh, zero, and these one, ones and zeros should remind you of something. So then you take the text. In each text, uh, you, uh, there is a sequence of um, uh, characters, and you can treat every word uh, with its bits, zeros and ones, as a number. That is a number which uh, in the binary system which corresponds to a certain number in the decimal uh, system. Treat every word as uh, a number calculate its quadratic residue related to the um, um, uh, key. It will give you either one or uh, zero, treat it as a bit. Use those bits to write your secret message. That is, uh, imagine um, uh, this. Um, uh, you, uh, uh, your message is this uh, uh, document uh, was authored by Victor Raskin, social security number, whatever, uh, 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 on the uh, 4th of February um, uh, uh, 2000. Uh, what, 15 words multiplied by uh, eight, um, uh, bi um, uh, six characters per uh, um, uh, uh, word uh, 90 uh, multiplied by 8 bits, 720 um, uh, bits. We need a message which is at least 720 words long to uh, give us all the correct values. And then there is a problem. Only about 50% of those will give us the correct uh, um, uh, uh, values, the, the words. Some of them will give us the uh, no, no, wait a minute, I, I, I'm lying. Um, uh, each word give us um, uh, a bit, right? No, that's, that's right. Uh, I'm not lying, just exaggerating, um, which is okay pedagogically. Um, uh, so um, mm, some words will not be okay. The linguistic problem, the computational linguistic problem is to replace those words with those wo which are okay. That is, synonyms, which will give us uh, the right uh, quadratic residue uh, value. Or in some cases, you cannot replace just one. You have to replace a whole phrase, making sure that all the other values are OK uh, as well. This is doable. This is doable, and it is doable um, um, uh, automatically. Uh, we can embed. Uh, uh, a, a hidden uh, message in a text without changing uh, the uh, um, uh, meaning of the text. So that's another uh, direction that we are um, uh, exploring. Uh, let me uh, finish um, uh, this way. Uh, think about it. Uh, have we uh, explored all the possibilities for involving text in information security, for handling text? Wherever we can do that, natural language processing, which is an extremely advanced uh, discipline with uh, much enhanced uh, um, uh, possibilities, uh, amazingly not underlying most uh, web search engines yet, but uh, uh, people at Microsoft and uh, uh, in many other places, Apple are uh, hiring uh, graduates in linguistics and natural language processing like crazy. And from some of them, we haven't heard for 10 years. So they must be preparing something really big. Uh, 
Um, uh, uh, th there are possibilities there, and this is why we are all excited here about uh, this interesting interface between natural language processing and information security. You will agree it comes uh, to you uh, from pretty much out in the left field. This is not what you associate with uh, information security. But chances are that this is what you will associate with information security because language is there and we must take advantage of it. If we don't, somebody else will. Thanks. Sorry about the mishap with the projection. <laughs> Any questions? Like, why did the projector not work? Well, thank you very much. <laughs>